Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. Today's reaction is going to be on Yumi the Magical Cat. So we're going to take a look at Yumi's biography, story, take a look at the gameplay abilities, any cinematics Yumi might have, and then we'll move on to the skins and special interactions at the very end. Okay, so obviously the only thing we know about Yumi is that it's a magical cat. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I'm assuming Yumi talks. I looked to see if there were special interactions. There are. So Yumi has to talk. It's a talking cat. I personally am a cat person. I actually have two cats myself. That's it. So let's get into Yumi and find out all about this cat. Oh, wait, I do know Yumi is a support player and or a support champion. And I've actually played Yumi with the very tiny bit of League of Legends I've played because my friends try to get me to play League of Legends. And they're like, hey, dude, just play Yumi and just help us win. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Okay, the quote says, cats are made of twilight and tricks. Dogs are made of barks and sticks. Books, just old trees. Okay, so, you know, we got the uh, old cat versus dog quote going on here. Roll support, like I said, region bandle city. Okay, so yeah, what is Yumi? Is Yumi, okay, it looks like Yumi's related to a lot of Yordles here. We're doing a lot of uh, Yordle reactions lately. Um, Yumi's not a Yordle, I assume. It's an actual cat, but we have related champions are Lulu, Tristana, and Timo. Paragraph here says a magical cat from Bandle City. Yumi was once the familiar of a Yordle enchantress, Nora. When her master mysteriously disappeared, Yumi became the keeper of Nora's sentient Book of Threshold, traveling through portals in its pages to search for her. Yearning for affection, Yumi seeks friendly companions to partner with on her journey, protecting them with luminous shields and fierce resolve. While Book strives to keep her on task, Yumi is often drawn to worldly comforts such as naps and fish. In the end, however, she always returns to her quest to find her friend. Okay, so this is kind of a sad story, but also kind of like wholesome in a sense, because it's just a cat wanting to find its owner, which is obviously sad, but it's also like showing the love that a cat can give to its owner and stuff. And obviously we got some cat stuff here, you know, with the naps and fish. And then book here is capitalized and I see it's capitalized up here. So book itself is like an entity. I wonder if the book like well, let's just learn more about the book here, probably in the biography as well. Great design on Yumi here. And obviously probably every cat lover likes Yumi, unless you guys hate Yumi. Is Yumi one of those that people hated just like Seraphine when uh, Yumi came out? In the outlands of Bandle City, there was once a wooded glen where the moon moths glimmered and the riverbanks overflowed with rainbow fish. And a cottage nestled between the verdant trees lived a yordle enchantress named Nora with her cat, Yumi. Born with magical powers of protection, Yumi enjoyed a life of leisure for many years, pouncing on sunbeams and napping beneath the mouse trees. Whenever adventure sparked her interest, she joined Nora on explorations across the material and spirit realms. Nora spent her time collecting strange objects like broken cups, shards of colored glass, and fabric with funny stitching. She examined each artifact with deep reverence, though Yumi never understood their purpose. Nevertheless, Yumi would use her magic to protect Nora from harm and would warm her feet when they returned home. The doorways between realms are finicky and seldom open, even to creatures as dexterous as cats. Yumi watched as other Yordles waited for days for the eastern star to align with a particular stone archway or waited impatiently between marsh lilies seeking a silver blossom blooming from the mud. Only then would a pathway appear. But Yumi's Yordle, Nora, possessed a powerful Book of Threshold, which allowed her to instantly travel anywhere depicted in its pages. That's very powerful. When Nora opened a portal, she and Yumi would gleefully dive into its glowing paper and arrive at their destination, joined a moment later by the book. All right, they're already like kind of hyping this up for me to be like ultimately sad because somehow the Nora just disappears. Let's find out. Yumi never paid the book much attention until one starless night when she returned home from luring moon moths with her shiny light to find Nora missing. She saw the book on her master's desk and flipped through its pages in a panic, noticing that some were torn out entirely. Unable to read its title, Yumi cried out to it in, in distress, calling it simply Book. In response, the book wiggled, and Yumi was surprised to learn she could understand thoughts amidst the rustling paper. Despite not having a voice, Book made itself loud and clear. Okay, so Book doesn't speak, but it's like, it's, it's an alive thing. Yumi learned that Nora had gone somewhere so perilous she had destroyed the portal as she traveled. Yumi knew she had to rescue Nora and turn to Book for help. Each of its thousand pages led to a different location along the lines of magic that crossed the material and spirit realms. The page Nora had used to travel was lost, but Book might be able to get them close. Yumi and Book would have to explore every possible threshold. She became Book's unlikely keeper, vowing to protect it with the courage of a lion. 
If it fell into the wrong hands, the doorways to Bandal City could open to all kinds of unsavory and ravenous intruders. Yeah, that's a very powerful book, and so you cannot lose that thing. But I wonder how Yumi carries this book around. I guess it's a magical book. Yumi's a magical cat. We don't need to think about it that hard. Yumi and Book began their arduous journey visiting, visiting dangerous and unfamiliar lands. Yumi sought Nora's scent on the wind to little avail. While Yumi would sometimes break from their search to follow the scent of a mouse or restore her strength with a quick cat nap, Book was frustratingly cautious, grumpy over lost time, and nervous about threats they might encounter. Nevertheless, Yumi and Book were both determined to find their master and bring her home. So that's nice too. The book is actually like willing to, or not willing to help. The book wants to help. Book wants to also find its owner. When Yumi especially missed Nora, she often sought out other companions. One of her favorites was a door-carrying shepherd with thick whiskers and a deep laugh like a babbling brook. Yumi rested on his shoulders for a time, protecting him from angry snow spirits stirring up flurries and a hailstorm while he brought her wriggling fish. Eventually, Yumi uncovered the scent of her master lingering in a vast Shuriman ruin. Digging deep into the sand, she unearthed a broken shard of blue pottery that looked like a piece from one of Nora's teapots. Before she could burrow further, a ferocious beast surfaced from the sand, and Yumi and Book barely escaped. She could only imagine the chaos if a creature like that ripped its claws into Book's pages. Though unlikely companions, Yumi and Book have become fast friends, united by their love for Nora. Yumi continues to search everywhere for signs of her master so she can someday return to her life of napping in the sun by Nora's side. That's a cool origin story for Yumi, but also a sad one. This one hits me a little bit more personally, not personally, I would say, but it's just as a cat owner myself, right? Like I can't imagine my cat getting lost and looking for me. It just makes me instantly sad. But this is, um, Yumi seems like a cool character. So does Book. And I kind of want to know more about this book, if there's like an origin to it. And um, I really am interested to hear Yumi's voice lines. Let's go ahead and read the story next. Our story is called The Biggest Catch. And I can't really tell what's going on with the artwork here, but let's continue. My yordle Nora snores into the pages of my friend Book. My tail twitches as dozens of moon moths sail in through the open window like floating lanterns. And I leap joyfully into the air, not caring if I catch one. I bounce higher and higher, batting at the moon moths as they drift all around me. One of them bends and turns inside itself, lashing about until it twists into the shape of a mackerel. Around me, the other moon moths spin in midair, all transforming into floating fish. Delicious, until the world, whole world turns upside down. Books cascade up from the shelves, landing on the ceiling with a dozen thuds. My Nora floats upward, still asleep. The fish flounder in every direction as we fall up, up, up. I wake up. I was going to say, this is probably a dream. I wake up, blinking sleepily into a wooden box as moonlight shines through the slats. How in a mouse's house did I get here? Oh yes, the tasty stink of fish fills my nose, and I remember prowling the streets of Bilgewater, finding a crate of dried fish, then eating my fill before falling into a deep belly full sleep. Before I can get comfy again, my stomach lurches and I'm knocked onto my side. Dozens of dried fish fall on top of me, just like my dream, and my stomach purrs. Book flutters in the corner as it tries to edge away from the falling fish. It's always hinting that food is bad for its pages. I think dried up trees would be much improved with the smell of fish, but Book knows much more about dried up trees than I do, so I don't argue. Oh god, could you imagine a book that smelled like fish? Ew. I peek through the cracks between the slats. The floor beneath us creaks and shifts while in the distance, moonlight flickers on the surface of the ocean. Book, why? I cry. Naps never lead to bad things. Book opens and closes in exasperation. I don't do water and neither does Book. Yeah. I start to panic. Book rustles, reminding me not to worry, but it's too late. I scratch and scramble at the wood in desperation, and I shred some of the dried fish by accident. This ocean is making me destroy my yummiest snack. It's the worst type of water. I paw at Book's cover, opening it to a frost-tinged portal that will take us far away from this watery nightmare. We have to escape somewhere, anywhere, even somewhere cold. I'm about to jump into Book's portal when I hear a scream that sounds like tinkling bells and the brightest rainbows. A scream that makes me f my fur stand on end. A yordle scream. Okay, a yordle in bilge water. I can't actually think of one. Okay, what yordle are we gonna see here? I peek through, oh wait, probably Tristana, I bet, right? I peek through the slats in the crate and watch as two human sailors drag a blue furred yordle to the edge of the bustling ship's deck. One of them has black chin whiskers and the other is chubby and both are smirking. They step over roped stacks of harpoons, fishing poles, spears, and coils of thick fishing wire must be deep sea monster hunters. This little one is gonna fetch us a prize, gulper fish, eh? The first sailor says. I hear the biggest fish love yordle meat, says the chubbier sailor. Never tried it before myself. Not a lot of yordles around Bilgewater. Whoa, are they talking about eating a yordle? Jesus. The blue furred yordle squeals and struggles against them. I'm not bait, he exclaims, squeaking with each word. I beg you, please release me. The sailors don't budge. 
Who's this blue yordle? The whole ship tilts as a particularly large bump shakes my crate. Ah, that'll be the fish now. Time to fill our boat with gulper flesh, says the first sailor, grinning. I don't like his grin. An enormous fin circles our boat, making lion-sized waves that bash the side of our ship. I feel Book tugging at me. I know it wants us to escape through a portal to get away from the bad water right now before anyone sees us, but I hear the yordle cry out. I stick my paw through the slats in the crate and open the crate's latch. I won't leave a yordle alone to die. Not after losing my Nora. Okay, so there we go. That's one of the motivations of Yumi. And also we know Yumi is like a support champion. And so obviously you it would make sense that like Yumi is essentially like, you know, a support in the actual lore of Runeterra and stuff that Yumi's gonna actually go out and seek to help others and stuff like that. And of course, you know, with Nora being their missing owner, also being a Yordle and growing up with a Yordle, you know, Yumi's going to have more of a connection with other Yordles in general. The sailors watch the fin thrash around in the water. They don't notice me as I leap from the, my crate like the quietest tiger and stalk them from behind. The poor Yordle is tied to a long fishing pole, which the sailors are dangling over the ocean. The water beneath him is bubbling and frothing. How does water always move in the worst ways? I jump over the pile of harpoons and book follows, flying next to me and nervously flapping its pages as it hovers in the air. They see us. Right, I, I think I've seen Yumi... I don't know. I've seen Yumi somewhere. The book like floats, right? And it just yeah, follows, right? That's how it, how it works. That's how they like follow each other. Is that a purple raccoon with a flying book? One of the sailor asks. I think it's a baby bear with a journal, says another. No, you idiots. It's just a cat, says a third. Get it. The sailors rush at me, but I dart swiftly between their feet. I unfurl a coil of magic that twists and tangles around their legs. They trip and topple like cups on a table. I perch on the ship's railing next to the fishing pole, unsure what to do next. The waves swirl below us and my hunting instincts kick in. Something's gonna pounce. Untie me, shouts the Yordle as he clings to the fishing rod. I am not a piece of bait. This is quite strange and embarrassing. Luckily for him, I am not afraid of fish, even if I don't like water. I bound onto the fishing pole in the midst of a cat's leap. Sometimes time slows. With my paws splayed out like pancakes and wind rushing through my fur over the terrible water, I am determined to save this Yordle with everything I've got. Besides mid-leap, there's no going back. Don't worry, small blue Yordle, I shout. I got you. The Yordle's fate and mine intertwine as I land on its shoulder, with Book right behind. The fishing bowl wobbles under our weight. The biggest fish I've ever seen, a third the size of the boat, bursts from the sea with its mouth gaping open, hundreds of teeth glistening in the moonlight. There's a lot of moonlight mentioned in this. Its jaws open so wide it could swallow a pair of cows without even chewing them up. Even in the dark, with my shiny light, I can see its skin is made of pointed razor-sharp scales of silver and violet. The giant gulperfish swallows us whole. The yordle, book, me, and even a bit of the fishing pole with room to spare. <laughs> Wait, what are they going to do now? We jostle against the roof of the fish's mouth as it falls back into the water. It's pitch black and smells like old seafood. Before it can gulp us down, though, I balloon up in a magical shield that bubbles around us, lodging us in the fish's leathery gullet. Okay, I do know about the the shield that Yumi can do. I don't know all of Yumi's abilities, but I do recall Yumi obviously having a shield. I blink on my shiny light again, illuminating some seriously rotten teeth that explain the awful smell. The Yordle squeals at the sight. The fish lashes about, and the three of us are thrown in every direction, protected by the impermeable bubble. What a strange way to make new friends. <laughs> I try to open books so the three of us can escape, but the gulperfish leaps into the air once more and we are tossed into a heap inside the bubble. We fall with a thud. The fish must have landed on the ship's deck. I hear the sailors shouting as the enormous gulper thrashes back and forth, slapping them with its tail. Right, so the uh, sailors are actually trying to catch this gulperfish now. I hear a splash and another and another. The humans must have been knocked into the water. Still stuck in the throat of the gulperfish, I flip book open to a portal that shimmers with the dusky green of Vandal City, the green of home. Now, my question about that is, how does one get to Bandle City? Is this, obviously this is one way, but how, you know what I mean? I know Bandle City is like off somewhere on its own. And it's like, I don't know. Like, how does anybody else get to Bandle City? Obviously, it, people can't, I guess, because that's why it's only filled with Yordles. You guys let me know in the comments on that. I grab the small Yordle shirt with my teeth and dive into the page. The portal widens and we spin into the spirit realm, dizzy and whirling into a jumble of colors. I'm going to assume this is just a random yordle. We emerge coughing on the banks of a shallow creek. My lungs fill with the sweet air of Bandle City, thick and lush as in my dream. Sapphire blue crickets chirp in the twilight as the brook babbles gently, full of fish, normal sized fish. Book flap its pages to dry off. The blue furred yordle stands up, dripping and shaking. 
What was that? How did we escape? He asked. Wasn't the nearest Bilgewater portal back on the docks? Lucky for us, Book carries our portals around everywhere we go, or anywhere we go. Lucky for us, Book carries our portals around wherever we go, I say. Book twirls, showing off its dried up tree pages, each inscribed with the magical gateway outlined in ink and paint. Okay, so wait a minute. So Bilgewater actually has a portal? Okay, so maybe there's just a portal between Bilgewater and Vandal City? Uh, okay, I don't know. Well, thank you for saving me, both of you, says the Yordle. He looks at Book curiously. Is this where you're from too? Yes, but we don't live here anymore, I say. I look at Book, sadly thinking of Master. Book flutters. I know it thinks it's time to move on. You know how to get home from here, I ask the Yordle. Yes, yes, just up the hill, past the bull moles. I know this metal well, and I do hope you find your yordle, he says, before wandering off. I stay for a moment, watching as the gloaming turns to daybreak. I catch a glimpse of a moon moth hovering on the horizon, and I long to pounce on it. But I remember that Nora is still lost somewhere, perhaps waiting for us to rescue her this very minute. I pat Book as gently as I can with my paw. I know it misses her too. Aww. Then I open it to a new page and dive in. Oh, that's kind of cool. I mean, in a sense, in this story, we are getting Yumi showing off, you know how Yumi can be a hero or Yumi is a hero. I mean, Yumi essentially rescued a Yordle from sailors. Now you, Yumi did that in a non-violent way. So that's kind of like the difference between Yumi and say like another sort of hero. Another sort of hero would have maybe taken out the sailors and then rescued the Yordle, right? But Yumi did it in a different approach and probably the only way Yumi knows how to. I don't know if Yumi actually has, I mean, Yumi has to have an attack ability, but you know, Yumi very much so I know is a like support role, like 1000% in, in League. So, all right, let's go ahead and actually get into the abilities so we have a, a better overview of what Yumi can do. All right, to start us off, we have Yumi's champion teaser before we do the trailer and it says Book of Thresholds. Do we know anything more about this book? It seems like a very powerful book. Something like Ezreal would want, you know? I don't need instructions. Okay. That's your job. Wait, think it's safe to go back? I know. Oh, Maybe I like that the book like wiggled. <laughs> Let's see. To communicate. Where could Master be? Yeah, I hope Yumi finds Nora at some point. Mark this page book. No master, but lots of Oh, it'd be so cool if Nora became like a champion in the future, actually. That looks powerful. We should Ooh. check it out. Okay. And then just goes through. That looks powerful. Let's go towards it. Very fun. All right, let's go ahead and do the trailer now. All right, we have Yumi's champion trailer. Let's go ahead and watch this. It's a minute and 50 seconds. It's got a lot of views on it. Know, book. Master could be anywhere. Okay, there's Yumi talking and the book mm. and fish. She'd pick a place with fish. Would she now? Oh, are they inside? Wait, where are they? Oh, books like we gotta get out of here. Oh, <laughs> where are we? of course we go here. Oh, fish. Fishy, fishy. Uh, uh, uh. oh, it's a trap. Book is always just saving Yumi, isn't it? <laughs> it's Twitch. Rats, up tight. Uh. Yeah. Oh, cool. We got to see the ability a little bit there. And Kled. Fizz, it's all Yordles. Okay, so Yumi rides the book as well to, like, get around. Shield, heal, cuddle. Kill them. <laughs> bopped them. Oh, that makes sense. I guess I bop my cat a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Just give him a little bop. Yumi really has a fish obsession. My cats personally have a chicken obsession. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh. All right, I feel like Book is the one just making like all the decisions, at least in this trailer. I know Yumi also chooses like where to go sometimes, but it definitely looks like Book is just like the adult in this situation currently. Okay, that was a fun trailer. Let's go ahead and watch the gameplay abilities now. All right, gameplay spotlight next. 
This is Yumi, the magical cat. Leaving a lazy life of cuddling and snacks, Yumi uh -huh. and her best friend Book go on a quest to find their master. Yumi dishes out heals and shields, escaping enemy attacks and keeping her new friends safe. Use your claws! Your claws! Use your the claws. Cat's out of the book. Welcome to the Yumi Champion Spotlight. Cool. Cats do yawn a lot, don't they? Yumi starts with a point in W. You, you and, and me. me. When activated, Yumi dashes to an ally and attach it, becoming okay. untargetable by everything but turrets. She goes oh. along for the ride until she breaks the bond Didn't or know that. attaches to another friend. If an ally recalls or teleports anywhere on the map, she can tag along. Cool. There's no Pretty clue useful. to jump among her teammates. Choosing when and whom to attach to is a core part of her kit T. Wow. Every Come so on. often, Yumi's next basic attack Bop and against block. an enemy champion restores mana and grants her a shield. Bop and Block's shield has infinite duration and follows Yumi or an attached mm. ally until it's broken. Lots of shields, lots of heals. only attack enemies while unattached. Okay. Yumi fires a prowling projectile that deals damage Ooh. to the first enemy hit. Okay. If the missile's been in flight long enough, it deals bonus damage oh. and slows. That's cool. If the magical cat is attached, she fires from her ally's position and can direct the missile's flight path what? with, what else, her mouse. Her if mouse. Yumi unattaches while it's in flight, the missile flies straight. Okay. Yumi's E, Zoomies, Zoomies. Has two charges, granting a short burst of movement speed and a heal on each cast. That's so funny that they made that if an attached, ability. Her partner gets the heal and speed boost instead. Oh, that's fun. Lower health are healed more. Giving your friend Zoomies. She's about your size. Cool. Yumi's not kitting around. Final, final chapter. chapter. She opens book, launching waves of damage that root enemies after multiple hits. Oh. While using her ult, Yumi can move, attach to ally champions, and even haste with zoomies. Oh, very cool. That's Yumi gotta be pretty good. Yumi is all about strategically attaching, unattaching, or swapping teammates. Start games by yeah. hopping on and off your ally to poke enemies down with empowered attacks and prowling projectiles. Even though Yumi can't get targeted while attached, if her partner mm -hmm. dies, she doesn't actually have nine <laughs> lives, and she'll go pretty fast, too. Yeah, see, the thing about Yumi Even is she I has to rely on a teammate quite a bit. Right meow and have them thank you for not getting boxed. I love mm. keeping my friends alive. Cool. For truly cataclysmic plays, tell your tankier teammates who like going into mm. the fray. Root opponents True. during the engage, keep your allies at high health, then slow down fleeing foes so your team can clean house. Now kill him! Kill him! Very much so a support champ. Yumi can play the like in the truest sense. And mouse, taking your team into Whoa, danger and getting them away safely. If you want to support with powerful heals to safeguard frontline allies, grab a friend and get in lane with Yumi, the magical cat. You and me, cool. we got this! Yeah, I feel like if you got Yumi attached to you, you better do something. Oh, what is that skin? Ooh. Oh, come on. Yumi really had to knock off something off the desk, of course, of course. Yeah, I remember this. So I played a very tiny, tiny bit of Yumi at one point in the time that I did play League of Legends. So... Yeah, you very much so rely on your own teammates because Yumi by herself doesn't do very much, right? You got the one Q ability, you got the ultimate, everything else is kind of like zoomies and like healing and, and shields, right? So yeah, in that sense, Yumi is truly a support champion. Um, I'm sure some of you have tried Yumi. I, I feel like I remember at a time, somehow I heard like Yumi was oppressive at one point. I don't know. You guys let me know though, how Yumi kind of like shook up the meta, if anything. And just like if Yumi's even popular anymore, I feel like the thing about Yumi is it's not a very um, it's not as fun as playing like a different champion, I bet, because it feels like Yumi is very much so like just there, like kind of healing or whatever around the map whenever they can. It's not as much of an active role, although I, I mean, I don't play the game. So you guys let me know. Uh, maybe Yumi actually is very active in the game and pretty oppressive. So yeah, let me know in the comments on that one. Okay, I figure let's do the Wild Rift version of the video as well. See if there's any difference or just see what else we get from the Wild Rift video. Oh, and book. This one's also about three minutes long. So maybe we'll see some new stuff or... Okay, we're just getting gameplay currently. You're in what range? Attack champ, gain shield, and mana. Shield protects, attached ally. Okay, okay. Hold and drag to steer the missile. Prowling projectile is pretty fun. 
While attached, it empowers the missile. Slow and deal bonus damage. Yeah, the, the you and me ability is very fun, I imagine. While attached, follow ally movement. Become untargetable except from towers. Is it going to show the tower attacking Yumi? Oh, no, it doesn't show. It's just showing. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Recast to unattach or switch allies. Mobilizing effects trigger the cooldown. Ah, I see. Detach after traveling with teleporting ally. That's cool that you teleport with, but it makes sense. And then zoomies, heal yourself. And then also gain move speed and attack speed. Zoomies might be my favorite ability just because it's like literally what cats do all the time and it's just hilarious. Gain move speed and attack speed. Yeah, zoomies is like a great ability. And the fact that you can give it to your teammates as well. Affect ally instead. Like, I feel like, so when you play Yumi, you're pretty much just going to try to be attached as much as possible. Because it, it, it's only, like, beneficial to be that way. Final chapter. That's a cool name as well, obviously related to Book, because Book is the one, like, dishing out the damage there. Oh, and the fact that you can move as well is very cool with that. The best heals come with cuddles. True. Okay, so Yumi went to Malphite, then Kaisa. Staying on Kaisa. Cool. We got this. Cool. Ooh, a Valentine's one? I assume maybe? Very cool skin. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move on to the next video. Yumi really got to be put like into everything kind of right away. I don't know if they knew how popular Yumi would end up being, but like Yumi was in Wild Rift pretty much off the bat, seems like, and then as well as Legends of Runeterra. So let's watch this. Let's see what Yumi is like in Legends of Runeterra. We're off on a new cool. adventure. Why are they like, what are those? I go where you go. Wait, 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 wait. New, uh, new keyword, attach. Okay, play me on an ally to give it my stats and keywords while I'm attached. When that ally leaves play, recall me. So Yumi's a three mana, two, two, round start. Grant the unit I'm attached to plus one, plus one. Otherwise, grant me plus one, plus one instead. And then level up when I or the unit I'm attached to have attacks three plus times. Cool. So same concept in Legends of Rajera as well. Your lunch. Your lunch? Whoa. Oh, he is a fish yordle, isn't he? <laughs> I didn't think about that. Didn't make sense till now. Rainbow fish, ooh. Lots of fuzzy animals in this one. Okay, lots of plus one, plus ones. We're gonna see the level up here in a second. Come on, book. Don't worry. Best buddies, best pals. Are those like little baby yordles? What are those? I was gonna say they're Today mice, but say. I don't think so. I mean, uh, enough, enough. <laughs> I don't wanna get the voice line spoiled, but we're hearing some of them now. Cool. Taking out the board. All the yeah, look at that plus dude. Fifteen. Perfect or papercraft dragon. Huh. Always use the buddy system. Ooh. Oh, it was like you mean going through the book into a new world. That was very cool. Alright, so now hold on, let's roll back just a little bit. Oh, it says Yumi is a fae. Interesting. Uh, three mana, three, three. When I level up around start, grant the unit I'm attached to spell shield and plus one, plus one. So you get a shield as well. The power of 
Pantheon's voice line just like so good. Cool. Mushroom ring. Look at that guy. Very nice. Cool. You guys will have to let me know how Yumi is in the game Legends of Runeterra. See how good she is. All right, let's go ahead and move on. We still have the champion theme now for Yumi. All right, let's listen to the champion theme for Yumi. It's two and a half minutes long. I imagine this very whimsical, magical, adventurous kind of music. That's what it sounds like so far. A little uplifting, happy. Kind of like what you'd hear in like an RPG or something. Dude, I love it already. Lots of like little bells and like flute coming in. Strings though, prominent for sure. Dude, this is like a good, I don't know, song to just have on when you're chilling, hanging out. It's definitely like happy, which is a good thing. Like it, it makes me feel that way, so. Oh, but we're getting something a little different now. I say that and then it's gonna change. Oh. Is that someone's, are we getting voices? Yeah. Someone in the, in the background adding their vocals. Is that the clarinet? Those strings. Do, 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 do. Song's beautiful, man. Giving off kind of like, oh, there's something I can't think of right now. I don't want to say Harry Potter. I can't think of it. Just like a fantasy, right? Like a fantasy movie or something. That's kind of what it's given. It's like when you like open up an MMO for the first time or if like you're watching a fantasy movie and they're like showing the world for the first time, this is the music I'm kind of like imagining. Ooh, I like that doo 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 doo, -doo the way the, the strings went down. This is a fun song. That was great. Very cool. All right, let's take a look at the skins for Yumi now. Yumi's only a little bit like maybe two to three-ish years old. It looks like all the videos were that old. So uh, we got a few skins here, which is pretty nice for Yumi. I like the original design of the cat, but let's see what kind of other skins we might get for Yumi. I mean, it's a cat, so hopefully they'll do something like kind of creative here. Let's go ahead and look. Okay, this is the one that we saw at the end of the gameplay spotlight, Battle Principle. So are you telling me that the principal of Battle Academia or whatever is the, is Yumi? That's actually kind of funny. I feel like that's something that you'd see in like an anime or something. Oh, very cool. You get different colors and everything. I like the original here with like the, the green and the black. Then you got like an orange cat. The glasses are of course pretty fun. Cool, I like these. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Okay, and this is the other one we saw at the end of Wild Rift. This is Heartseeker. So yeah, it is the Valentine's one. Who is that with her? I can't tell who that actually is. Okay, so we got a, like, a, I'll call it a Valentine's one. I don't necessarily know if it's actually a Valentine's one, but so we got, you know, hearts on the ears there. That's cool. Heart shaped ears and then still more colors. See, the, this is actually kind of weird though, because I feel like when it goes away from the original skin, it's no longer really like a heart seeker one. I guess you still get the hearts and everything. Ooh, I like the colors of that one. It's like a Siamese cat. Uh, Yeah, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, not really that heart seeker vibe anymore with it after you go away from the original, but they're still really good skins. Okay, next we have Yubi. I did, what? Why did we make Yumi a B? I'm so confused. Out of everything they could have chosen, they turned Yumi into a B. Well, okay, let's just let's just take a look at it. I mean, it is cute. It's kind of fun, but it's just not the the skin set that I thought they would do for Yumi. It does look good though. I kind of like that the the bug, this looks more like a ladybug on top when you change it. It's not even like a, a bee anymore after you get away from the first one. This one looks more like a, a beetle maybe, I'm not sure. 
Yeah, it totally changes the bug on top of the head of Yumi. So that's kind of cool. I do like that aspect of it. So that's a fun skin. I like that one. Next we have, oh yes, bewitching. Cool, we got another bewitching one. And Yumi is now a pumpkin. I actually like it because a lot of the Halloween skins that I've seen so far haven't been my fave, even though it's like my favorite holiday. These skins are cool. Yes, I like this one. I like the variety actually. The variety for Yumi skins are actually way more in depth, I think, than some of the other champions that we've looked at in the past because it's always just like a color change, right? But with all of the Yumi ones, it looks like it's actually changing different aspects of the champion. Or maybe it's just more pronounced because Yumi's so small and like you, you have a lot of like changes that you can see right off the bat. So yeah, I really like the bewitching one. That might be my favorite skin so far. Next we have EDG. Okay, so this is honoring Maiko's, Mako's. It's Mako's winning performance as Yumi during the 2021 World Championship. So somebody used Yumi during the 2021 World Championship. So very cool. I know Yumi was probably just out then in 2021, but still. Okay, I mean, this is all right. They pretty much just gave it like the, the white and blue flare. Actually, it gave Yumi a little bit longer hair maybe here. I do like the ears are pretty static, the, like the black ears and everything. I wonder, do the players ever get a little bit of like say on how the skin comes out when it's actually like honoring them? You would think they would probably get some sort of say, right, on how the skin looks. This is a good skin, but I think some of the other ones are just better. And last but not least, we have Sheba. Something about this small dainty dog doesn't feel right. Wait, did it just hiss at the audience? Why are they doing? I'm confused. I'm confused with some of the choices they made for the um, skins ideas that they've done for Yumi. I mean, they're fine, but I'm just like the B one, this one. Okay, so we're just going to turn Yumi into a dog. Got it. I mean, it looks good. It looks fun. They just decided to give Yumi a costume. They were like, what are our costume uh, skin sets. Let's do those and then let's just see what we can give Yumi. So this is another fun one. I think it's fun. I like the fish on the tail. Is that straight up just a fish on the tail? I think it is. I think the best one is probably the original with the orange. That one looks like a watermelon. Uh, That one's not bad. That one's not bad either. Yeah, the orange is probably the best along with maybe the blue one here with the orange fish. I like the color scheme of the blue and the orange versus the orange and the red here. But I think the orange and the red is still the best. All right, guys, let me hear from you what your favorite skin is. I think mine is probably going to be the bewitching one. And, you know, surprise, surprise, I actually like the Yubi one. And then Battle Principle. I mean, those are going to be my top three. Honestly, Battle Principle might be a close second with the original Battle Principle color scheme. And then bewitching number one. So let me know, though, what your favorite skins are. The only little trivia we have on here, it says the icon for you and me is reused for the Teamfight Tactics item Yumi, which is named after her. Okay, very cool. We don't get too much Teamfight Tactics trivia down here uh, very often. All right, we're on the fandom wiki for Yumi. We are skipping over the, you know, like the early life stuff because it's just stuff that we've read already. We're going to start off with the recent events. Well, when Yumi especially missed Nora, she often sought out other companions. One of her favorites was a door carrying shepherd with thick whiskers and a deep laugh like a babbling brook. Yumi rested on his shoulders for a time, protecting him from angry snow spirits stirring up flurries and a hailstorm while he brought her wriggling fish. Eventually, Yumi uncovered the scent of her master lingering in a vast Shuriman ruin. Digging deep into the sand, she unearthed a broken shard of blue pottery that looked like a piece from one of Nora's teapots. Before she could burrow further, a ferocious beast resurfaced from the sand and Yumi and Book barely escaped. You can only imagine the chaos if a creature like that ripped its claws into Book's pages. So we we noticed, we already read this part about her finding the broken teapot, which is cool. They're finding clues. That's awesome. Uh, we didn't know about this little uh, yordle uh, that Yumi took care of for a little while. So that's a little bit cool. All right, appearance. Yumi is a cat with blue fur, a gold pattern on her tail, and golden eyebrows and whiskers. Personality. Yumi is a playful and curious feline with cat like instincts like chasing mice or red dots and taking cat naps. Plus, she dislikes dogs like Warwick or Nasus. While she can be easily distracted, she can be focused on finding her master Nora along with Book. She does miss Nora, but that doesn't mean she can't find new companions like Braum, for example. Again, I'm going to continue with this idea that I think down the road, Riot will have the opportunity to make Nora a champion. And I think that'd be cool to have like lore progress for Yumi to find Nora all of a sudden and then Nora becomes a champion. I think that'd be like kind of fun in my opinion. Okay, let's look at our relations here. We have Book of Thresholds, of course. They have become fast friends united by their love for Nora. Braum. During their travels, Yumi and Book have encountered Braum. Yumi rested on his shoulders for a time. Oh, it was Braum that that's who that was. Oh, that's a honestly, that's kind of perfect. 
Braum is like such a wholesome champion, even though we haven't reacted to him yet. I just know. Uh, so that's cool that she found Braum. Alun, Yumi and Book are friends with Aphelios' sister, Alun, uh, periodically visiting her in the spirit realm. What? Did we know that? It's been a very long time. I say very long. It's been a little while since I reacted to Aphelios. Um, and I there might have been mention of Yumi in that, but I can't remember it now. And then we have Rek'Sai. Yumi and Book were attacked by Rek'Sai. Ah, how do how do we know that? Was that confirmed somewhere? Maybe in Rek'Sai's um, like story or something. So that's who attacked Yumi and Book when they were in Shirima. Rek'Sai, what are you doing? Okay, let's scroll here. What do we got? A curious journey video. I guess we missed that. As our journey comes to an end, Ava races home to save the Bandlewood Festival, but she will make it. But will she make it in time? Uh, and then the Book of Thresholds video we watched, The Biggest Catch we read, The Magic Cat. Okay, very cool. Oh, a little bit of trivia here at the bottom. Cool. Yumi is a magical cat familiar to a Yordle enchantress named Nora. Yumi's name came from when she heard Nora say, you and me, and thought that was her name. Oh, you and me. So Yumi, wow. That's clever, huh? The Book of Thresholds was originally written by a Yordle anthropologist. Oh, here we go. This is what I want to learn about in order to study how Yordle magic works and how Yordles traverse the spirit realm. It has been added over the years by generations of Yordle mages who explored the various gateways to and from Bandal City. Do we want Do we want to see Yumi in Arcane? I mean, Yumi could randomly just pop up for no reason. They could write Yumi in, but I don't. I highly doubt it, right? I feel like Yumi would be a distraction in, in the Arcane show. Okay, the Book of Thresholds was given sentience by one of its previous owners in order to protect itself from those who would use its power for evil. Cool. The Book of Thresholds essentially works to allow its keeper to traverse the spirit and physical realms using portals and bypass the normal requirements for these portals. For example, most portals can only be seen and used by Yordles and only open at certain times of the year or in certain weather or when other characteristics are met. The portals contained in the Book of Thresholds can be used anytime by anyone, whoever is its keeper. Every page contains a different portal to a different place. Yeah, that's what makes it freaking so powerful. Book will always try to retrieve and repair the pages that were lost so that it can be whole again someday. Nora tore out the page that led to the place where she is trapped because she didn't want Book to follow her. She knew it would be too dangerous for Book that it might fall into the wrong hand. Well, we see the teapot uh, piece in Shirima, so... My guess is it's somewhere in Shirima, but maybe not. Yumi and Book have been looking for Nora for around four years. Oh, that's pretty sad. Yumi is a literal cat, so she doesn't understand many human concepts, though she may sense certain things better. I guess I didn't think about it that way. I mean, it's a magical cat, so she probably does sense things a little bit better, but she still thinks like a cat does, right? And then it says, Book is much more rational and risk adverse than Yumi and prefers to stay on the path so it can keep itself and its keeper safe. Yumi is much more playful with an element of unpredictable spontaneity. That's a cat, people. She is highly distractible, especially by worldly comforts such as food or naps. Plus, she's a literal cat, so rational thought doesn't come to her easily. She can't even read. Yeah, basically, this whole trivia is just like, guys, Yumi's a cat. That, that's it. Yumi's a cat. All right, cool. Let's finally get into the voice lines. All right, starting off, we're going to do the Legends of Runeterra special interactions. Let's go ahead and get into it. This is by Skin Spotlights, of course. All right, here we go. Starting off with Pantheon. I'm going to bop them like this. Bop, bop. Strike true, little lioness. Oh, that's cool. Today we are destroyers. <laughs> Be bold and show no fear. Oh, I love the interaction Today between Pantheon and Yumi. We say. Playtime. I mean, uh, enough. Enough. <laughs> we fight till our last breath. Oh, good thing you guys have nine lives, right? Ah, so there's there's an example of like Yumi not understanding human concepts, right? Without the legs. If you're a catfish without the fish. <laughs> That's fun. I'm fizz. Uh -huh. You're lunch. Oh, I love that one. Embrace the current or be swept away. Okay. What if I just don't go in the water at all? Right. If Cats in water? Up, hold on, hold on. I got to pause. Cats in water, I think is probably worse than dogs in water. Cuz you know like some dogs will embrace water, right? They kind of love it. Cats in water? Oh my. It is they know. They do not like water. If we split up, we can... Yumi, wake up! Oh, oh, Yumi's sorry. sleeping. Uh, sorry, I was napping. What did you say? <laughs> hmm, pets really do look like their owners. What's that supposed to mean? Huh? Yeah, Are what is that supposed to mean? taking a cat nap. <laughs> oh, the enemy <laughs> idol, that's great. Exciting happens. 
I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is no time for a nap. What? What are you looking at? <gasps> oh, is it a bug? Can I eat it? <laughs> Dude, we that's such a cat it. thing. We knocked him over. The power of friendship. Cool. Oh, I am so going to barf in their shoes. They oh, really come on. Hold on. Way. Hold on. Hold on. No, I'm trying to think if that's actually happened to me. I think that may have happened to me. I think a cat of mine in the past at some point in my life has probably puked in my shoe. All right, cool. Let's see if there's any more little uh, voice lines scattered throughout because that's very short. Hopefully there are some more throughout this. Hey, Mr. Gem Yordle. Gem Yordle. Can you help me find my friend? What's their name? I'll consult the stones. <laughs> I like his voice. Nap first or fish? What do you think, Ooh, That's Jelly? a great question. <gasps> Otto, I thought I smelled burning. Okay, there weren't any more voice lines in the Skin Spotlights video, but I did see that there are voice lines uploaded by Pantheon's Bakery YouTube channel. So we're gonna take a look at these. There's a few in here that I believe are new. Hello, you mean? Wait, it's Nora. Okay, hold on. We actually have a Nora card itself. Let me see what your uh, Nora does. Elusive. Well, that makes sense. Your mysterious portals now summon four, five, six, or seven cost followers instead. And then plant a mysterious portal randomly in the top four cards of your deck. That's cool. So wait a minute. Yumi actually reunites with Nora in this game or what? Is it really you? Book! We found her! Wait, 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 wait. Yumi, dear, let's go home. Wait, Nora's just a grandma? It's a grandma yordle. Of course it is. Owning a cat. Okay. It's my yordle. Oh, I missed you. Oh, that's so fun. Oh. My dear cat, let these eyes have a look Wait, at you. Wait, so you may find my Nora? Socks. Aren't you just Bless a my sight. socks. I'm ignoring you, so you know I'm mad you left. Uh, 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 okay, so there we go. We got some Nora uh, Yumi interaction. So does that like confirm lore wise that Yumi finds Nora? Like, what's the deal? Because I didn't see it mentioned anywhere in the fandom and obviously it's not mentioned anywhere in like the, the story or anything. Okay, and then we have more voice lines for like Yumi's abilities and stuff. So let's hear those. You did good. Now let me help. Don't worry, I've got your back. Okay. Bop them. Bop them. Zoom. Zoom. Need a new shield, buddy? Are you any good at chin scritches? I know where scritches. you go. Come okay. on, book. This away. Time to prowl. Okay. Swat, swat. We had more cat yeah. voice lines. Oh. You and me, we got this. Book. What's happening? Cool. Thank you, Pantheon's Bakery, for also uploading these voice lines for Yumi. Very nice, very nice. Okay, these were fun. I mean, I didn't even think about what kind of voice lines we would get going into Yumi here for Legends of Runeterra. But yeah, I like obvi the obvious cat choice uh, voice lines with the, you know, the red dot that we just had, knocking over cups, the bopping. That is also a cat thing. And then, you know, I honestly bop my cat sometimes too, just for fun, just to play with them. And then, you know, like cuddles. And then I'm surprised the most by obviously this Nora thing. So if you guys have more info about that, if they just made it so they reunite in Legends of Runeterra, then my whole theory about Nora being a champion in the future is probably out the window. I don't know. I just thought it'd be a cool thing for them to do in the future. But then I also found out Nora is like a grandma Yordle. I don't know if we technically, maybe we need a grandma Yordle as a champion. You guys let me know though what you think about that. Uh, other than that, these were very fun interactions that we had with Yumi. I want to see what we get in League of Legends though. Maybe we'll get some more with her interacting with other people because we really only got her interacting with like pantheon and that was it i want to see some more interactions with other people like some yordles or something right some other champs that we know okay cool we have a 10 minute video for yumi special interactions hopefully it's not any like repeat from league of legends or from legends of runeterra but uh yeah and like i said hopefully we get some more like champions and stuff okay here we go oh so you're Zaga's pet Oh, whoa, okay. I love how Skin Spotlights loves to start off with like an insult. Wow, Is here. so you're in charge of the giant litter box, huh, bird guy? <laughs> Hold on, I didn't think about the, all of Sharima basically being a litter box for Yumi. Great. Yeah, you birds can fly. Well, so can cats. This cat. Oh, that's fun. I didn't think about the birds hey, chasing birds Godma. as well. I like coughing things up too. <laughs> Hairballs. You can't have book, large metal cat. Large metal cat. Book, you got it backward. You said Nasus was a god, but he's just a dog. Ah, there it is. I'm gonna eat all your leaves and throw them up. What the? That's true, actually. Oh, wow, Hookman. 
hook man. Oh, fair. There you go. Makes sense that she would get excited about Pike. How do you groom all that fur? I don't think Rengar licks himself. I bet I can eat that guy. Bet I can eat him. Based on our Yordle poll that we did on the channel, I feel like you guys would be okay with Yumi eating Timo because Timo got zero love in those polls. Rats? I'm against them. Extremely bad. Why doesn't she like rats, though? Make hmm. your shiny light glow, Velkaz. I want to chase it. Ah, uh, hmm. The red dot oh. belongs to you? Oh, okay. Rats! I, I assume because he has like a little laser with his third arm there. I don't know. You guys let me know about that one a little That's bit more. That's how bears talk. Hmm. My purr uh -oh, is louder here we go. than your growl, dog. Ooh. Some cats actually have really yeah, quiet purrs. Fishy, purse. fishy, fishy. Yeah. <laughs> Hungry meow. Have you seen my master? She's about your size. <laughs> yeah, that's real helpful. Get ready to face the mighty Yumi. Oh, and book. Yeah, Book's probably to face the scarier one, maybe? Maybe not. Excuse me. What the? Smoker's Ooh, cough, imagine. Warm. Anyone smell burning fur? I was going to say, you're going to get on fire. So is Book. I hear your red dot's master. <laughs> Ooh, can I climb up on your spike thingies? Uh. So does your gauntlet help you pet more cats? Oh, that's interesting because uh, Yumi doesn't really understand like human concept stuff. So she thinks like the gauntlet is like for better pets or something. That's, that's cool. After this, can you play the piano while I nap, Jin? Hmm. I don't think you want to nap near Did Jin. Say fishbone? Hmm. Don't worry. Spectres have nothing on magic cats. <laughs> Grr, I'm a mountain lion. <laughs> okay. Ah, I see you have the loud thing to scare off the enemy. Guns, yep. Ugh, you smell again. like dog. Ugh. Just two cats out on the town. Oh, cool. In Italy, yeah. Has there ever been a cat aspect, Pantheon? Hmm. That's a great question, actually. And my wish has come true. The amount of, like, champion interactions we're getting, love it. Book, meet giant <laughs> that's fun Spirit realm, they thought of everything didn't they for these interactions i feel like okay okay we can make this work <laughs> that's spe specifically attaching to twitch this is cool you we're getting voice lines like for that Ooh, do yorls have the same smell now i can bat around the body uh. we did it we knocked him over Right, knocking him over counts as killing him. Do you him. want me to bury that? <laughs> We're killing buddies. Like poop. <laughs> okay, the pentacle. Power of okay, we heard that one. Hang on, book. I am hanging on. Oh, that's fun that the voice actor did I that. Oh, that's fun. Woo! Here we go. Those are fun voice lines. Acting like you're going through a portal. I'll stick with you. I guess we're going this way. <laughs> Yumi's just along for the ride. Ooh, ooh, get him! Woo! Cheering him on. He'll bite you. My cat, one of my yeah. cats, is a biter for what sure. He loves to bite my Use fingers claws. sometimes. Claws. Humans' claws aren't that great. Slice them. Now kill him. Kill him. <laughs> Do the secret five claw technique. Five claw technique. What is that? Quick, lay on your back and kick him. <laughs> That's funny. Watch out for us. I love all the clever little cat uh, voice Get lines. Attack! We got this. We got this. It just goes to show how much of a cat Do Yumi really thing. is. Yeah, you know. One. See you in your next life. Oh, okay. This is when your ally dies. On to the next friend. <laughs> I'm an independent cat. <laughs> That's every cat. <laughs> it's just you and me, book. Back on my own. 
Lonely meow. Aw. Time to find a new friend. Oh, I thought we were playing. Are you oh. dead? <laughs> the way she said, "Are you dead?" Okay. Usually you guys eat them. I feel like you don't even really squash them. I bopped them all. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, attacking a turret. So knocking that over. That actually makes sense. Stupid overgrown scratching post. Scratching post. There it is. That's I great. That, you giant pile of stones. Piss. <laughs> wow, even brighter than my shiny light. What is that ward? What the? <laughs> They're never going to see us coming. Okay. Goodbye to the darkness. A Move river. in the river. Uh-uh. Book hates water. Yeah, you do too. Do not drop me. Do not drop me. Okay, respawn. Uh, is it time to save the world again? Oh, that makes sense. Waking up from like a nap is the respawn. It's okay. We've got six left. Six. Oh, five? Uh oh. All right. Which one of you's got great aim and is good at chin scratches? Hmm. Cats make great companions. Just ask I my agree. master. Who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Uh-huh. Who's ready to risk our lives, defeat our foes, and maybe knock over some cups? <laughs> I think the first two. Tell me the game plan again. Wait. Fish. Someone has fish. Okay. Where is it? <laughs> you mean getting distracted by fish happens more often than anything. So, who wants to be my best friend? Book, Book reacts. You're already my best friend. Oh. I love the relationship the between Book between and Yumi, and actually. Is our enemies. Oh, you gotta go kill him then. Knock him over. I, I mean. am the brains. You are the brawn. Book is Book. Book is Book. In and it's okay to be Book. What that smell is, it's it's book. fish? Oh, it's it Book. Like old trees. Whoa. Who loves. I, I personally love the smell of like a new book. <laughs> Maybe I'm I'll weird. I'll be here through thick or thin. Unless I smell fish. <gasps> right. Have fish? Of course. Hey, new friend. Uh, warn me if you're going to do something crazy, okay? That's a fair thing to say, actually. Don't get too attached, book. This one looks reckless. Hmm. That's a fun line. Hey. 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 <laughs> huh? Oh, no. I don't need anything. Oh, my. They just literally captured how a cat will meow at you four or five times and not need anything. You hungry? I stuck a leftover rat on page 237. A leftover rat? Do you know what vexatious means? Vexatious? Brooke called me that, and I think it might be me. I have no idea. If someone told you to jump in a lake, uh huh. would you do it? Just because I go where you go. Oh, that's another fair question. Okay. I bet we'll be friends forever. Well, unless you wander into the brush with your face. Oh, okay. <laughs> they aren't ready for the ferocious team of us. Us. <laughs> Love it. I'm like your ghost. Ooh. <laughs> <sighs> oh, is it time to save our friends again? Ooh, you smell good. Did you recently fish? Oh, come on, Yumi. Stop thinking about fish. Mush, mush. Hmm. I feel like the voice actors have a lot of fun doing these voice lines. Warrior by your side. Oh, yeah, you. Faster, faster. Okay. Do you ever get so sleepy you fall asleep sitting up? Just you me? know what? No. Well, that's a lie, actually. Okay, it's time to prowl. You do know how to prowl, right? I was wondering if we were going to get any, like, sneaky cat voice lines. How about now? How about now? <laughs> okay. Rubbing my head on you means you're mine. That's actually true. Cats like to do that. You can pet me on my chin and back. Nowhere else. Wow. Oh. Yeah, cats usually don't like the stomach. If unless we they trust rat, you. I call dibs. Or a bug. Or a fish. Wherever you go, I go. Just don't go somewhere bad. Right, right. This way. 
No, this way. Okay, that way it is. Yeah. Cool. Those were actually so fun. I'm going to be honest. I love that for the first, like, I don't know, four minutes. No, like three minutes. We had just pure interactions with other champions. Like, I loved that. These were all very fun, very clever, like little cat voice lines that we had in here, you know, about the different kind of behaviors cats will do. So yeah, I'm hoping that, you know, the Riot team got all the cat people together in a room and was like, here, let's write some voice lines for Yumi, our magical cat in the game. Very fun. I wonder if we'll ever get another cat like, well, I guess we already do have cat like, you know, like some of the other champions that Yumi has actually interacted with, like Nidalee and stuff like that. Rengar. So I guess we already do have other cat like champions, but Yumi being a specifically actually a cat. So that's very fun. I pretty much understood all of the voice lines for Yumi when it came to like reacting to the other champions, you know, obviously not liking dogs, you know, birds tend to like to kill uh, birds. And then we have like the rat ones. Yumi doesn't like rats. Just like basically the, the rats are supposed to represent like mice in the in the game for us because we don't have like an actual mouse champion, do we? And then, yeah, all the other ones I pretty much understood. It was just the Victor one. I think he has like a red laser, right? Is Am I wrong on that one? Um, other than that, I think I pretty much understood. Caitlyn obviously has a red dot on her uh, sniper rifle as well. These were all very fun. Like, I, I think these were great. I really loved the variety we got for attaching to allies. And then like the portal one, I, I thought the voice actors did a fantastic job showcasing like how a cat would be going through a portal and stuff like that. I thought they did a great job and they probably had a lot of fun doing these voice lines. They seem like they did. I say voice actress, but I have no idea. It could even just be like a little kid. Uh, doing these voice lines who knows yeah I don't know I want to hear from you guys what do you guys think of Yumi's voice lines I thought they were very clever I want to know from you guys actually in the comments too if any of you are cat owners let me know uh what your cat names are that'd be really fun to let me know that all right guys I don't really think we need I mean there's not much lore wise that can really happen with Yumi well I say that but there's anything that could happen with Yumi actually Yumi could go through a portal and we could like discover a new part of Rune Terror for the first time or something right but so far, Yumi's just kind of hanging out, going through portals, trying to find Nora. But even though Nora was found within the Legends of Runeterra voice lines, I don't know what's really going on there. So if you guys have more insight on that, if she actually found Nora or not, uh, th that was like two years ago. So I actually assume that that is them, the dev team, showing that they actually end up finding each other. But I kind of want to know what happened to Nora and why Nora, you know, went through the portal on their own and what kind of Nora was looking for, if they were looking for anything. So if you guys have any more insight on that, please let me know. I think Yumi's in a great spot for the lore though. I don't think there's gonna be anything changed to Yumi anytime in the near future. I think Yumi will stay exactly where they are. I wanna hear from you guys though on the meta of Yumi. I mentioned it earlier in the reaction, but I, I am very curious how Yumi is in the game at this current moment, because it seems like, you know, there's a lot of support champions in the game. Why choose Yumi, right? Uh, if you have arguments for why Yumi is utilized right now or why Yumi is pretty much not used, I'd like to hear them because I'm just very curious. Yumi seems like a pretty unique champion and the fact that, you know, she attaches to an ally, that seems like a very unique thing for a champion in League of Legends. So I'm kind of curious how many people actually use her. All right, guys, this was another fun reaction for League of Legends, and I am going to be doing these still weekly. So please leave a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully get to all of the League of Legends champions at some point in the timeline here. But, you know, League keeps releasing champions, so it's going to be very hard to catch up to them. But I think we're doing a pretty good job going through them weekly. Of course, leave any um, recommendations on who to react to next in the comments. I'll take a look. All right, guys, take care.